Hello everyone! Uh, today we are going to look at how to create a table using T-SQL. So the syntax for this um, is kind of simple. It just goes create table, then the database name, the schema name, which in this case I'm just using DBO, uh, and then the table name, which I feel is good practice to prefix with TBL underscore, um, so that when you're referencing this in application code or in other places, you know that it's a table rather than a view. Uh, so the first thing to consider when creating a table is your primary key. Now this needs to be a unique identifier which will identify a single record in your table. So I will do a specific tutorial on this next I think because um, it deserves its own time um, and I also don't want to bore everyone who just wants to learn how to create a table. <laughs> So the field that I'm going to use here as my primary key is the customer ID field, which you can see I have set as type integer here, which is just a number. Um, I have also set this to be an identity column, um, which will start at one and increment by one every time. Uh, which basically means that every record inserted into the table will be given the next consecutive customer ID number available and I don't have to worry about assigning it every time I insert a record, which is great. Um, I've tried to use a spread of field types here, but as this is customer information, most of them are varchar. Um, character fields um, of various lengths. Uh, it is actually very important when creating virtual fields to be realistic about the length of characters that you are expecting. Um, please do not set all of these to virtual max or virtual 1000 for every field if you know that it won't reach that because this does have a performance impact. Um, I think that I will actually do a tutorial at a later date um, that will actually show you the impact of using massive varchar fields, uh, particularly when you don't need them. Uh, this was something that I learned in a Brent Ozar seminar uh, fairly recently, actually, and I was pretty amazed as I didn't realise that it can have such an impact. Um, so I'm pretty militant about this now. Um, now, I also have a date of birth field here, which is just a date field, and created on, which I've set to date time, so that you'll be able to see the difference between date and date time, although it is pretty self-explanatory. So, if I just run this, now we can see that the table has now been created there. And let's insert some data into it and have a look at it there. So we can see now we've got customer ID 1, um, which I didn't have to insert. Um, we can also see the um, difference there between the date and the date time fields. Um, so the only other thing really to note here um, is the option to set fields as null or not null. Um, if I try to insert a record into the table uh, and don't include a field that I've set to not null, so if I remove surname out of here, we can see that it won't let me um, insert that. So if you want to make sure that people insert specific fields, then you need to set them to not null. Um, we can see here there that that second record was not inserted. Um, so again, there's quite a lot more reading you can do about this topic. Um, I've only covered this very, very briefly just to scratch the surface. Um, so I will post um, a link to the Microsoft Docs article in the description. So if you want to know more about um, all of the options that you have when creating a table, then go and have a read of that. Um, if you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, feel free to add any comments below. Um, the next tutorial in this series will be primary keys, foreign keys and unique constraints. So thank you for watching.